Hello everyone, welcome to the psychology course. Today we will continue with chapter 3, Motivation and Emotion. In this chapter, we will firstly talk about perspectives on motivation, then hierarchy of motives, the hierarchy of needs, emotions, theories of emotions, and lastly, the expression of emotions. Let's start with perspectives on motivation. Motives and emotions are influential in shaping human behaviors. Motive is the power that gives energy to behaviors and directs them. There are many approaches focusing on motivation which direct human behaviors. What forces us to behave towards a goal are drives which are the most obvious internal motivators in physiological issues such as thirst and sex and needs which is a term used to explain more complex drives such as affiliation, affection and social approval. Biological factors are not always necessary in the emergence of some behaviors. Any condition around the individual may act as a stimulant for a specific behavior. Incentives refer to non-biological elements that appeal to an individual even if he does not feel any need and trigger him for an action accordingly. These elements might be in the form of objects or events that attract individuals' attention. A complex behavior must have a fixed pattern throughout a species and be learned. Stereotype behavior patterns of all the species are called instinct. Another perspective to explain behaviors is related to unconscious motives. There are often times when the reasons of human behaviors are not known or understood. Let's see what the hierarchy of motives are all about. While some motives are biologically inherent in every individual, others are structures varying from culture to culture. Still other motives vary according to individuals since they are learned ones. The presence of such varying motives according to individuals and societies often causes problems in terms of classification. The most widely accepted classification divides motives into two groups primary motives and social motives. Certain environmental factors such as the smell of a newly baked bread and physiological needs such as hunger might affect the emergence of motives that induce human behaviors. Primary motives refer to common and unlearned drives that emerge due to biological needs and direct human behaviors accordingly. All biological drives such as hunger, thirst, and sexuality are among primary drives. In addition to innate motives such as hunger, thirst, and sexuality, individuals acquire new motives through learning. Social motives, which include being together, power, and affiliation, are about interpersonal relationships and as influential as unlearned motives on human behaviors. While the motives such as hunger, thirst, and sexuality are common motives of humans, social motives are shaped by social life and social values, although they are sometimes affected by biological needs. There are also the hierarchy of needs. Human motives range from primitive unlearned motives to more complex ones. Abraham Maslow, an avid supporter of humanistic psychology, classified the needs shaping human behavior in the form of a pyramid, placing the most basic ones at the bottom step and the most complex ones at the top. The needs from the bottom level to the top can be listed as follows respectively. Basic physiological needs such as hunger, thirst, breathing, sexuality, and sleeping, the need for safety for family, job, and properties, social needs related to love and belonging such as family, social groups, close friendship, the need for the appreciation of value, achievement, and respect, self-actualization which covers the superiority of morality, creativity, and problem solution. According to Maslow, it is not possible to meet the needs at upper levels without satisfying the ones at a lower level. An individual who cannot satisfy his hunger is not expected to seek for a romantic relationship or some ways to achieve self-realization. Now let's move on to emotions. Emotions are complex processes that affect human behaviors. 
In fact, emotions, which can be defined as what individuals feel about something, are the drives that induce behaviors. Human beings have been programmed in a way to be able to make contingency plans to handle life-related issues. The word emotion derives from the Latin word motere, which means move. In other words, it comes from the exact word emotion, that is, moving energy. Emotions emerge at different levels in the body. Although different theories define the order of levels in different ways, the following three levels are observed in every emotion experience. The first level is subjective emotional experience in which each individual experiences emotions according to their perceptional framework. Another level of emotional experience is emotional behavior level. The behavior based on a specific emotion gives clues about this emotion to the people around the individual. The third level related to emotional experience is physiological reactions in the body. A noticeable increase due to an emotion in the heartbeat and breathing as well as some changes in intestine and stomach can be listed as the examples of this level. Now let's see what the theories of emotion are. There are many different theories focusing on how behaviors are induced and their effects on physiological changes. The following questions and the answers to them form the basis for emotion theories. How do people react to the events that occur in our world? What is the order of these reactions? How are these reactions regulated? Among these theories are James Lang theory, cannon bar theory, cognitive theory, and sociobiological theory. According to the theory developed by William James and Carl Lang, the body reacts to the nearby events, and when this reaction is noticed, an emotion occurs accompanied with these physiological changes. Aiming to cover the weaknesses of James Lang theory, cannon bar theory argues that emotions and behaviors are simultaneous. Where there is any kind of stimulant nearby, thalamus is activated. While nerve system is stimulated to induce physiological changes, a signal is sent to the cortex that start a process of being aware of emotion-related experience. In cognitive theories, mental processes such as perception, mentality, the methods of coding, recalling the knowledge and experience gained and thinking styles, which are also defined as cognitive elements, affect how physiological changes are shaped. According to the sociobiological theory, humans display social behaviors as a social entity. These behaviors have evolved through a natural process throughout history. While some behaviors have disappeared, some new behaviors have emerged. Emotions have also passed through similar stages. Such emotions help individuals to adapt themselves to the environment. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 3 of the Psychology course. Goodbye and see you in our next program, Chapter 4.